Welcome to the Theater Podcast, intimate personal conversations with theater's biggest names. I'm Alan Seals, and this is a very special episode because it's the very first episode of March 2019, and March 2019 is the Frozen Takeover Month. Frozen the Musical has taken over my social. They're going to do some Instagram takeovers. At least four of the episodes released this month will all feature guests from Frozen the Musical. And uh, we'll have a couple giveaways. We'll have the, of course, Instagram takeovers, maybe even a little bit more. So if you're hearing this and you haven't yet started following the podcast on Instagram, please do so now so you don't miss anything at theater underscore podcast, both on Instagram and Twitter. And then uh, if you need to head over to Facebook, it is slash official theater podcast. This episode here is with Joe Carroll, who just took over the role of Hans in Frozen. And uh, actually, I don't know why. And in hindsight, this is this seems pretty pretty obvious. But when he said this in the interview, it, it surprised me. One of the most things he surprised me out of everything he said was that you know Hans is basically two characters in Act One versus Act Two. Act One is is this guy who's coming in and and you know, love is an open door this iconic song he's really in love with anna and or really smitten with her at least and then act two act two's the bad guy he turns into this guy that we want to loathe and it was actually <laughs> actually made me made me laugh when he said this too that his curtain call he's been in the show at the time we recorded it um at the time we recorded the episode he had been in the show for just a week and he's already getting booed during curtain call in, in a good way. The kids boo him because they, you know, they hate Hans by the end of it. It's just funny. Um, you know, these these smaller individuals come to see the show and uh, it's so real to them. So during curtain call, he gets booed and somehow that's enjoyable. Um, also, I've witnessed a lot of struggle from actors coming out of other schools that don't have the business knowledge or guidance to land their first agents or jobs or what have you. But uh, Joe Joe's story is actually quite incredible. He he seems like he was very focused, very smart, and he made the connections necessary to make it through 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 University of Michigan. But he made it straight out of college into into New York, and um, very quickly got an agent, landed the first role in Once the Musical, and uh, kind of the rest is history. So this guy plays ten instruments. He's super talented. He's super smart. Please enjoy this episode here with Joe Carroll. Here you go. One, two, three. Made his Broadway debut in 2012 in Once the Musical, following that with the 2013 production of Romeo and Juliet with Orlando Bloom, and then went on to replace Santino Fontana in the 2014 production of Cinderella. He was recently in Bandstand, the Boston production of Moulin Rouge, and just now started in the role of Hans in Frozen, Disney Frozen, star of stage and screen, Joe Carroll. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Thank you very much. How are you doing on this wonderfully snowy, cold morning? Yeah, it's snowy and cold, uh, but um, yeah, things are good. I'm about, I was just saying I'm sick of wearing scarves and hats and I'm about ready for spring. Yeah. But I was saying on the way up here, I get I get translucently pale this time of year, so I'm about ready to just have the sun come out. Um, are are you point, a, but, you're a beach guy? You know, I... Yeah, I I feel like there are beaches all around New York City that you never go to. I don't know. We went to the Rockaways one time, went to Jersey Shore a couple times. I'm just ready to like be in Central Park. I love to play Central Park softball or go running, just do anything outside. So, well, you're a you're an athletic guy too, right? You came mm -hmm. come from Michigan. Mm -hmm. Like, what part of Michigan did you grow up in? Uh, well, I moved around a lot as a kid. Actually, um, grew up for ten years um, uh, in a suburb of Chicago. Uh, Geneva, Illinois, and then moved to Michigan uh, for high school and college. And my parents are still in Michigan. They live in Grand Rapids, so west side of the state. And and my dad makes labels, and my mom is a caterer. She's a chef, and uh, I somehow ended up on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. But first off, can you cook? Uh, I can cook. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm all right in the kitchen. Um, that was kind of a prerequisite. My sister and I both, you know, we know our way around a a, a grill and a cast iron and a, you know we can, yeah we can juliana pepper and stuff like that so I, I wish i wish my my parents had done more of that with me like i 
I want to go home and cook for my kids now, but I'm just like, okay, the SpaghettiOs. Yeah, yeah. Here you go. Uh-huh. And then like real people who know how to cook, they're like, oh, that's so easy. You just put in the things and the things. And I'm like, that requires advanced planning and training that I don't have. Yeah. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I want to like matrix that knowledge out of you and just jack it in the back. Be a, gr- <laughs> be a great cook. But um, yeah, so we, we got there. Because you were moved to Michigan, yeah. big hockey fan, right? You played yeah. a lot of hockey. I played hockey growing up. I played a bunch of sports um, growing up, and uh, but hockey was the big one. Um, I was from about four or five years old. I, I played competitive ice hockey, and um, and sort of always did shows and and things as well. I've been doing musicals since I was in the third grade. Um, but I was I was an athlete. I love. I played baseball. I played. I was a horrible basketball player, but I liked basketball. But hockey was the big one. Um, and then as we were sort of talking about just before we got started, I, I got hurt, uh, when I was going into freshman year of high school, um, I got pretty nasty. Uh, I get, I broke two vertebrae in my back Oof. playing hockey, which yes, it was, it was pretty nasty, but I think sort of, and this is a bigger thing. I then got more into musical theater and, and theater in the arts, uh, because I was sitting around in a back brace. So I like picked up the guitar and I, and I, you know, I didn't, uh, I, I went back and I played hockey all through high school, but never really took it um, to the next level. And then uh, musical theater just slowly started to take over as, as it does uh, throughout high school. And I started quitting all the sports to focus on this stuff. Um, but I still, I, I have a buddy who I played with uh, in high school who's on the Red Wings, which is very cool. Uh, so Luke Glenn Denning, number 41 on the Red Wings. We nice. play, played together uh, in high school. And um yeah, yeah, but that was kind of the hockey background. And it's fun actually in Frozen because Bobby Creighton, who plays uh, Weaseltown, Wesselton, uh, mm-hmm. is uh, a huge hockey fan. And so I'll show up in the dressing room and he's got the Maple Leafs on his computer. And so he's like watching the Maple Leafs on his computer. I'm watching the Red Wings on my computer and we're <laughs> just talking hockey, you know, oh, we have to go on stage now, you know. And But uh, it's really, it's been really fun. I'm, I share a dressing room with, with, with Bobby and, and Kevin, uh, who plays uh, Oaken. And uh, it's a really fun dressing room. Uh, yeah. Very, very, very sports oriented. Yeah. The, the only hockey team I ever followed was was the Maple Leafs, but only because I have family in Toronto. Mm-hmm. So that th- my family was not not a sports family mm-hmm. um, or a cooking family. <laughs> <laughs> but my family was good, I promise. <laughs> um and then, well, you said when you broke your back, uh, that that's when you picked up the guitar or picked up the guitar more. Is that mm-hmm. when you first started to learn it? Because you play, how many instruments do you play, first off? Yeah, uh, I play like, I guess it's 10, 10-ish. You know, if you, the harmonica is an instrument. I play it poorly. The, you know, things like that I kind of picked up. But I play... Um, I started as a drummer, um, and that was where bandstand, why bandstand was so thrilling for me because I was a drummer since I was in diapers. I, I crawled up on my uncle's drum set and banged around when I was literally there, pictures of me as, as a baby. Um, so I always did that. Then I had to take piano lessons because, you know, mom said you had to take piano lessons. Um, and then I picked up a guitar in middle school and really started to play more and more, I think, you know, as I was kind of sitting around injured and, uh, taking that more seriously because there's only so much you could do, I guess, when you're sort of um, casted up uh, after an injury. So, and then and then from that, um, I learned how to play the mandolin because of once. I played the ukulele because of once when I made my Broadway debut and I had to learn how to play some of these instruments, but I had kind of the working knowledge to play a little bit of bass and play, mm-hmm. you know, a little bit of melodica and, you know, <laughs> things like that. So, um but yeah, that was that was the coolest part of, of bandstand was just bringing the drums back into the fray because I've been uh, there was the song banging on a trash can you know the Doug funny <laughs> like Doug the cartoon <laughs> um, sort of thing and you know all I want to do is bang on the drums all day that was kind of me as a kid right I wanted to be a drummer I mean that was kind of just I wanted to be a rock and roll drummer as as long as I could remember and and then again musical theater takes over and no you you can either be in the choir in high school or you can be in the band you can't be in both so i decided to be in the choir you start singing Mm -hmm. you do the musical next thing you know you're trying you know going to college for it and your parents are freaking out and you know (laughs) and it comes out in the wash that you know we're able to i'm able to pay my bills right yeah um what what was your first musical in high school do you remember uh hello dolly Really? Hello Dolly, yeah. Uh, I was Barnaby and Hello Dolly. Um, 
I could get you some pictures of that probably, but it, there was, it was great. And, and the kid, uh, Johnny Stellard played um, Cornelius. He was two years older than me. He went to Elon for musical theater. He was in Evita on Broadway. Uh, he's done a number of Broadway shows. And he, he and uh, not my other friend, uh, Mikey Winslow, um, who also went to my high school, he's currently in Hamilton. He just took over as a swing in Hamilton. Um, those two guys were really kind of my high school idols who said, you know, sort of paved the way and said that, you know, you can go to college for musical theater. You can major in this. It's a career. And, and they really sort of paved the way for me, um, as a kid in the Midwest who, hmm. you know, I want to, I want to be on Broadway where, you know, where do you start? And, uh, and I had some, a couple of great role models with those two, but yeah, so it was Hello Dolly. Sophomore year, we did Beauty and the Beast. Junior year, we did Fiddler on the Roof. Um, and that was the least Jewish production of Fiddler on the Roof <laughs> that there's ever been in in West Michigan. And uh, and then senior year we did On the Town. And you know it was a great. I had a great high school, a great a great background, and you know we did great shows. And and um, and uh, there was there was a fair number of people who made it to New York and have are are doing doing the thing. Hmm. And you went to to UM University of Michigan, mm -hmm. yeah, and. Did you major in theater there? Or, yeah. Or music? Or musical what was theater, yeah. yeah. I got a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in musical theater. Um, and uh, it was, that was, that was incredible. That was an incredibly lucky and remarkable experience um, to get in there. It, it's extremely competitive. And um, I live in Michigan. And so my parents were thrilled about a little in-state tuition, never hurt anybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I actually get a lot of, a lot of, uh, flack for that from my classmates because I was one of the one of the two kids in my class from the state of Michigan, and a lot of people are still paying off some student loans to pursue their <laughs> Broadway dreams. And uh, I got I got out uh, lucky, luckily. But uh, Rachel Hoffman, who cast Frozen, is a, a Michigan grad. Ashley Blanchett. Um, we, there's there's a in our show right now. Uh, ben Bogan, Jeremy Davis. I think there's a couple more, but we got we got a, a decent Michigan contingent in Frozen. It's interesting that that I, I guess you know what you're involved with is what you notice. You pay attention, like you buy you buy a Volvo, and then you see all the other Volvos on the street. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm from North Carolina, and I feel like I I had a string of of people I talked to that were all from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Like Beth Level and I, you know, we we're chatting and passing the podcast. And you know, she's from Raleigh, where I went to college, and it's, you know, it, it was just like one after another of people. But yeah, that's, yeah, that's so, funny. I love Beth, but she was she is a riot. Oh gosh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, amazing. Yeah, we she had us in stitches all the time during the, the whole bandstand process. Mm -hmm. She's such a, she's a Broadway legend, such a gem. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, well, back to you. That's who we're talking <laughs> back to. Back to me. <laughs> think about uh, me. Is. Let's think about you. Um, you mentioned instruments all along the way here, but you you did choir and whatnot. When did you realize that that singing was part of your repertoire? Yeah, I. Um, like I said, I was kind of doing the musicals um, all through middle school. I started actually, because the story goes, my, my mom didn't want to get a babysitter. Um, she was asked by a community theater, a local community theater in Chicago, where, where I was in middle school growing up at the time, to be in the adult ensemble of the sort of community musical at my school, which was Annie, and they needed nuns in the NYC scene, and they needed you know, some older actors. So... And she has a beautiful singing voice. And so she's, she goes to rehearsal. She's singing in the background in the chorus of Annie. And she'd bring me to rehearsal and I'd sit there. And I was completely enthralled. And the director saw that I would just kind of sit there. And, you know, other kids are, you know, running around, you know, cut, wreaking havoc or whatever. And I would just sit and watch. And so she asked if I wanted to be in it. We, you know, little NYC kid, we needed a, they needed a, um, a newspaper boy, like an extra, extra read all about it newspaper mm -hmm. boy. So that was in the third grade. And then it was always just something I did. It was something I, I did one every year. And, you know, there was this community of kids that I liked and it was fun and it was exciting and did that all through middle school. And then I started taking voice lessons uh, in like eighth grade. And I had like this voice teacher who would just, you know, take me through some basics. And then you get to high school and you have to start making decisions. You know, there's like, there's only a certain number of hours in the day. There's certain seasons. So... I had always played golf. And so I was like, I'm gonna play golf in the fall. I'm gonna play hockey in the winter and I'm gonna do the musical in the spring. And you can either be in the marching band or you can do choir, you can't do both. So I decided, all right, you know, I don't really read music on the drums very well. I'm kind of just a like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, rock and roll drum. So I'm like, all right, so we'll do the choir. And so I started 
freshman year singing in the choir and I got a solo freshman, first semester freshman year in the like freshman choir or whatever. And I sang this solo and, you know, since we all have ridiculous egos, everybody was like, you're so good. <laughs> and, and then I was like, oh, maybe I, I, maybe I can sing. Maybe this is something I like to do. And that was really the, that was when it really just all, all hell broke loose. Um, and I started singing and taking voice lessons seriously. And then, like I said, just quit everything, you know, quit the sports, quit this, quit that. Um, and focused on singing, you know, more voice lessons, more dance classes, more acting, you know, stuff. And, and that was really when it all started freshman year of high school was really the, the beginning. And we moved from Chicago to Michigan. And I always say that that was the best worst thing that ever happened because it, I, I really feel like if I had, if I didn't have that arts community at my high school, that was really, you know, yes, you can do this. Yes, you are good enough. Yes, you can not make this a career. I don't think I would have done it. So, and you had dancing classes in there too, you said. Yeah, I had the choreographer in high school who was like, if you want to do musical theater, you got to learn how to dance. Right. And and I my first dance class I ever took was um the very first one was uh like a summer dance intensive thing and I didn't make it through the warm up. We were doing a jazz class and the warm up was so intense. I was sweating profusely I thought I was going to hyperventilate and I left <laughs> I left afterwards and just walked home and I and my mom I got home and my mom was like what are you doing here you're supposed to be in the dance class and I was like I can't do it I can't do it it was so hard and then she's like okay yes yes you can we'll go so I went back and went back like 14 levels and started taking dance class with like 10 year olds and and my first I took a tap class with a bunch of 9 year old girls in in and I was 16 or something so nothing will humble you like taking a dance class with a bunch of nine-year-olds. Um, and, and they were tapping all and, oh, circles Just all tapping around circles you, yeah. around me. And still, I'm a horrible tap dancer. Um, but then I, I got, you know, a couple of great dance teachers in high school who took me aside and helped me and slowly, <laughs> you know, this is how we do this. Um, but the greatest gift I was I had was was taking partnering class. So I, I it was this ballet company that um, Johnny Stellard and Mikey Winslow, these guys, danced with. And there was a partnering class once a week. And so I learned how to partner girls and pick them up and put them down. And, mm -hmm. and that was the greatest gift because then I moved to New York. I, d I then danced all through college and tried to, you know, keep my, my skills up. But I moved to New York and I've now gotten, uh, Cinderella was a huge break for me. But I, I remember really kind of booking that job, I think, because of my partnering ability. You know, I went into the dance call and I could see the choreographer and, these people are like, okay, I don't know how this is going to go. We don't know this guy, and and I could I could partner. And so I tell guys who are who are trying to go into musical theater in particular, like, learn how to partner, learn how to pick women up and put them down safely, and hmm. and you know because that's that's a huge advantage. Uh, <laughs> I like how you have the caveat safely, yeah, <laughs> safely. <laughs> don't just drop them. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So that was through high school, and um, but the dancing was I, I worked extremely hard. At that from like junior junior of high school through college and have not been asked to do it as intensely as I thought I was going to um, in my professional world, but it's been a lot of partnering. I mean, Frozen is no example. I mean, I'm picking Patty Murin up and setting her down safely, <laughs> <laughs> as safely as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, so so far so good. Right. So you moved to, to New York in 2012, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. What, was, what was the story of... of saying, all right, I'm graduating, now's the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah here we go. Um, it, was, it was always the, the dream, always the goal, you know, and Michigan was, was fantastic about that, that, you know, they, they really help you to move to New York and they give you a community of, of graduates and lists of alumni and, and casting directors. And we had a great showcase in New York where I found an agent and um, they really made that transition as, as smooth as, as it could be. Um, and, you know, my parents were, were super supportive. I, I, I feel super lucky to have them because never once did they question this career choice to me. I'm sure they like would close the bedroom door and be like, oh my God, we're never going to be able to retire because we're going to have to pay for our, our, our artist son in New York. But they never, ever batted an eye to me. They were super supportive always. And so I, I had a little graduation money and I worked and I, I moved to New York with like, I think I had 2000 bucks. And I was like, oh, that'll be great. I'll, I'll be able to live for like like two months, like two and a half months. I'll just audition. And that money was gone in the first like three weeks. You yeah. know, paid my union dues, my rent. And it was like, oh my God, I have no money left. And um, 
and but it was it was a crazy transition because right at that time, you know, a preparation meeting opportunity, I played all these instruments and once had won the Tony and they needed more understudies. And so I showed up and it was like it was it was unbelievable. And you know, just I don't know if you believe in fate or whatever, but I moved to New York right when they needed somebody who could play ten instruments and who could talk on stage and it was it was an incredible gift that was and still kind of is the greatest experience of my theatrical life so you had you had union dues right off the bat were you union coming out of college yeah i got my equity card at a little theater in michigan called mason street warehouse which is um i, I did a bunch of shows with them in, during the summertime and they helped they gave me my equity card uh with the production of avenue q um coming right out of college and so i you know i did uh I did Avenue Q, and then I had to pay. You know, I had to pay mm -hmm. the good people at Actors Equity um, a large chunk of money, and then, uh, and that was that was that. So I, I was lucky enough to be union coming to the city, which can always be a tricky thing for actors. Right? Yeah, that, I think it, that's that's coming coming here has helped you out. Uh, already being union has helped you out a lot. The, the way you tell the story compared to other people, other stories that I've heard, it's you were helped so much by by um mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and the business like they seem to get the business side of it which mm -hmm. a lot of people come here they just show up and they're like here i am i was a star in high school give me lead roles yeah and they just get like crapped on for yeah you know years and i work sometimes. i work with high school students a lot and i tell them you know what are you looking for in a university and i tell them you gotta you gotta ask the hard questions of these universities like what do you do to help your graduates what is that transition like to get you to New York City or to LA um, or to Chicago, um, who do you know and how can you help? Because that is what all every business school does. That every every good college will have career fairs or mm -hmm. have you know you know alumni relations or whatever. And and the arts community is no different. You have to how do how do I how do I find an agent? How do I you know how do I go to open calls? What do I what do I do? How do I get you know these questions that. You have to ask these questions, and, and the universities have to help. Um, and Michigan was incredible in that way. And so I, I was, I had it almost as easy as you possibly could <laughs> coming to New York after college, and then having this amazing show present itself um, very shortly after graduation. Where and I went into once um, in end of August of 2012. So I would, yeah, it was pretty pretty cushy. It was. Pretty sweet. <laughs> Do you remember where you were when you got the call? Yeah, I was in. Yeah, totally. I was in Newark Airport. Um, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is not a very romantic place. Um, but I was going home for a wedding, and uh, I was i I had gone through. I had gone to my final callback at um, you know three or four. I actually i had I had gone to my final callback in the morning with Martin Lowe, the music director, and we played through a good chunk of the entire score of once on drums, ukulele, mandolin, guitar, bass, and piano. And I just like went around the room at this this studio and played through the majority of the score. And it went great. I mean, I was just super prepared. I had spent a lot of time with that cast album with Glenn Hansard's music, just learning how to play all mm -hmm. of it. So I, I was really prepared. I knew what I was doing. It was super fun. And then uh, I went and I worked a job at Javits Convention Center helping set up like a trade show for some friend of a friend to set up. So I was like literally just doing manual labor at Javits Convention Center for six hours and then went to Newark Airport and went through security and got a text from Stephen Copel, the casting director, who um, uh, he's, he's still just one of my all-time favorite people in the business. This guy has really made... Uh, helped me so, so much. And he, he texts me and he says, uh, and I saw the text and the text said, uh, you're going to be the new, uh, under, you're going to be the new swing and once call me as I'm going through security. And then I have to, <laughs> put, I have to put the phone in the belt <laughs> and it goes through the conveyor. And I'm like, you know, in a daze. And then I get the phone out and I call him and Steven is so dry and he's hysterical. And I call him and I'm like, Steven. And he's like, yeah, so you, how do you, you're going to make your Broadway debut. And I was like, I'm crying in the middle of New York <laughs> airport. And he's like, yep, super excited for you. Um, I have to go. I'm, you know, he's like going to see a show or something. He's like in the middle of his work day. And, uh, and I, and I just, I call my mom and, you know, mom starts crying. Dad starts crying. Everybody's just like freaking out. And and I'm making a whole scene in Newark airport. I'm like on my knees, you know, on the phone, right on the other side of security. And 
Terminal C or whatever. And people probably thought something really horrible had happened, but right. something really wonderful had happened, actually. That's so. funny. I can, I can picture that. Oh, Newark Airport. And half the people didn't care and half the people like, what? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Get out of my way. Yeah, get out of my way. I've got security to get <laughs> right. through. Well, let's talk Frozen. Yeah. Because, you know, that's why we're here. Um, you, so you're a week in, yeah? Yeah, week and a half. Week and a half. And you replaced, replaced the wonderful John Riddle. Yeah. Um, Who I've known since college. He really? was at Cincinnati when I was at Michigan. We've been friends. I've known him a long time. And, you know, he texted me when I got the job and, you know, big, wonderful, you know, so excited for you to be filling. He said, I think he said, I'm so excited for you to be filling the bad boy shoes. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's a great. Just a great guy. You got the text as you were going through security. Exactly. At no, JFK. It was a JFK. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> um, well, how, how did the character change between the two of you? Have you, are you trying to emulate him? Or are you kind of like, have you been given the direction? Just, you know, here's the script, make it your own. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I just, I feel like good actors are just stealing from good actors. So I had the great opportunity to just sit there and watch him a couple times um, to see where he goes and, you know, where he, where he walks and, and so I, I watched the show twice, um, really intently, and then I would, wa and then I watched a couple more times, um, sort of on monitors and stuff to make sure I was going to the right, exiting in the right places and whatever. But I just sat there and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm stealing that, and I'm stealing that, and I'm stealing that. Um, and he, because he was so funny and fantastic in the part, and then I just brought my own sort of, you know, little spin to it. Um, and and Michael Grandage and, and Adrian, the associate director, and Tim, the uh, assistant director, and all of these people have just been so, um, you know, kind of do whatever you want. You know, like here's the, here's where, you, you know, stand here, don't get hit by this thing, you know, do this dance step, but like kind of do, do what you want. And the, it's been really fun this week to figure out like who my Hans is. Um, and so... You know, I guess when by the time this comes out, I'll probably have more shows under my belt. But for now, I'm I'm uh, figuring it out. And that's good. Do you do you see a difference between evil and selfish in terms of intent? With Hans, you mean? Well, just in general, but then yeah, we'll relate it to Hans. Evil and selfish. Evil versus selfish. Yeah, because I have in my notes here, like I, I, this seems like your first evil character, mm. but then I was as I was about to say it, I don't think. He's necessarily evil. I think he's just so narcissistically selfish mm. mm -hmm. that it just kind of just, you know, he'll do whatever he takes. But he is the bad guy. Yeah. And it, it is, uh, actually, this year I played a lot of bad guys on TV. I did like, I did about six, um, uh, bless you, did like six guest stars on various little New York shows where I was killing people and, you know, selling drugs or something. I don't know. I like, it just seemed like this has been the year of the bad guy for me, which has been kind of fun, but nothing on stage, not, no big, you know, musical mm. theater is my, my, my favorite thing. So I was, you know, this is my first evil, I guess, musical theater role. But the cool thing is it's not, you know, we could get all sort of mammity Shakespearean about evil characters, not believing that they're evil. Um, I think with Hans, it's just fun because I think he, Ha, you know, he starts off with an intent and then it changes, but he, it, it just like at the top of the show, it's, it's so funny and silly. And he meets this, this girl. And we talk a lot about like his, like, what are the ulterior motives and like, mm -hmm. what is he really doing? And, and the fun part for me is like, it's just honestly, uh, you know, I think he's completely smitten with Anna and I think it's really fun. And it's just, we're having this, you know, act one is act one and act two is act two. And and so it's it's really um, kind of both sides of the coin. But I find his his ambition to lead and have power is kind of the overall downfall and where I, th and I think that happens over the course of the show. Like when, you know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Yeah. And so all of a sudden the women are gone and Anna runs after, tries to find Elsa. And now there's this guy who's been given a lot of power and what's he going to do with it? Mm -hmm. And I'm only talking about Frozen. 
Yes. The music. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. What else could you be referring to in today's day and age? Uh, yeah, but it's really fun. It's a really fun thing. It's to, to be, I get booed at my curtain call. Which Do you really? Yeah. <laughs> Such a trip. And I mean, I assume people listening obviously, you know, see the movie or whatever. And I don't know how much, to, how much of a surprise it is, but it is really fun to get to the end and, you know, have these little kids. And then like I go through the autograph line at the end and these little kids look up at me like really scared and confused because it's real. I mean, for, for five, them, it's five, real, six, yeah. seven, eight years old, this is fully real. And yeah. I remember seeing shows in Chicago and Broadway touring companies and Broadway shows and believing this is the real thing, mm -hmm. you know? And, and they look at me and they're like, I'm not sure about you, dude. And so I try to look down and I'm like, no, did you like the show? I'm not really that mean, I promise. You know, but you know, I don't know if they'll believe me, but they still take pictures and stuff. <laughs> did you... Um, I guess, do you enjoy the, this experience of being the bad guy versus normally being the good guy? Or or are you looking forward to a time when you can, you know, get hugs and smiles on the, in the, in the, uh, the, sh the show line after show line? Yeah. What the hell's wrong with me? <laughs> stage door line. Stage door. God, autograph brain line. brain fart. Yeah. Okay. Stage door. Yeah. I, I, I like it. I, I don't, um, I kind of, I'm just having a, having a blast getting to, do something, you know, very different. Uh, the second half of the show and the second half of Act Two is really unlike anything I've ever done. I, I find uh, there's a lot of similarities between a sort of Prince Topher and Cinderella and Act One Hans. And so I'm like, I, I understand that. I like that style of humor. Um, and Patty and I have an bl absolute blast. Um, you know, the first show was terrifying. The second show, I was still nervous. And in, I think around show four or five of last week, we really started to have fun. And so act one is super fun. And then act two, it just feels like something that I've, I've never gotten to do before. And it's really, it's really, really exciting. Right. What was your audition process like? Yeah, it was pretty, um, pretty classic. Um, I, I got an appointment from my agent. Um, I, uh, the first time was just for the associate team. So I went in for casting and for, um, uh, I think it was just Brian, the music director wasn't even there yet. It was just, it was, I think it was just casting and the associate team. How long ago was this? This was, oh gosh, December. December. So we're in March now yeah. taping this. Yeah. I got the, I gosh, I got to get my, my dates right. But it was, it, it was pretty long. I had like one with the associate team. The next week I went back in for more associate team people then I had a dance call with, um, and that was just with, that was with Rob Ashford and Sarah O'Gleby. Um, and then I came back again for the whole, for, for Michael Grandage and for um, Stephen and for Brian, Stephen Remus and Brian Yusufer. And then the very final, and then, so that was on like a Tuesday. And then the Wednesday was the final, final callback. And that was for, for Tom Schumacher and all Disney people. And that was a big, that was a, that was kind of the big, uh, mm -hmm. I call that the don't screw it up day because like <laughs> you've, you've done it now enough. And it's like, they're either going to, they're either going to choose you or, or they're not, right. but don't screw it up. Just go in and do what you did for the last two weeks. Um, and so it was pretty, it was pretty involved, but that's kind of classic for big Broadway musicals. They really want to make sure you don't suck. And, and so they, they, put you, they put you through, they put you through the ringer a little bit. Um, but it was great. And I, I, I was just sent, telling the story last night because uh, Michael Grand is coming to the show next week. He said the nicest thing on my final callback, and there's, there's a lot of Disney people there. It's a very stressful day. Mm -hmm. And I walked in the room for my final callback and he came up, uh, cause I'd seen him the day before. And he said, he said in his, you know, very British way, he was like, he was like, you did brilliantly yesterday just do the same thing today in front of all these people. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, everything's fine. Like, just take a deep breath and, and just do it again, you know? Mm -hmm. Just hit the ball, you know? And well, I guess that's the point. Yeah. You have to repeat yourself, repeat your amazing performance. Yeah, yeah. Now eight times a week. Yeah, um, but then it was fun because he gave me real freedom in, the, in that moment in act two where you realize that, you know, oh my gosh, Hans is actually the bad guy or, you know, he gave me full license to go. He actually, the actual direction he gave me was uh, go full bad guy. Cause I think I was, I was even too nice. You know, I'm like, Oh, I'm the bad guy. And he mm -hmm. was like, just go, go for it. You know, full, full, full evil. <laughs> I was like, okay. And so that was really fun to just, 
well, you know, turn up my 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 mustache and well, uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the snidely whiplash inside you is coming. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's interesting that to me that you said that uh, you play Act One as if he's like is as if he's actually smitten with Anna. Yeah. And it never it never occurred to me that he actually liked her. Mm-hmm. I, in, until you just said that, and and yeah, I, I can believe that. I think he sort of does. I think that if we get really into the the sort of dramaturgy of Frozen, that if tell if, me more, yeah, right. If he shows up already knowing, I don't know. If he shows up that he's he he knows he's gonna he wants to take over the kingdom, like like he doesn't he doesn't know anybody. He hasn't met he hasn't met Elsa. He hasn't met Anna. He hasn't met anybody. He doesn't know anything. And so he happens to bump into the sister, mm-hmm. and so. I think for me to not feel like an evil villain from the moment I walk on stage to be like, oh my gosh, who is this this girl? And then she leaves and she says Prince Hans is in charge. And and then that's that kind of moment where it's like, okay, now I, mm-hmm. I'm in charge now and I'm going to do whatever I need to do to be in charge. But I just like, I like playing it like he actually, you know, he likes, he likes her. I mean, how can you not? I mean, at first it's, Patty Murin, and it's also, I mean, it's so infectious. She's she's funny and she's beautiful, and we're going to sing this ridiculous song about how love is an open door. I, I, that takes a real sociopath to not, <laughs> to not have, like, any fun, you know? So, yeah, I enjoy it. How many times have you seen the, the original animated movie? Honestly, only once. Really? I just saw it one time, and I saw it, like, a little bit after it came out, and I... You don't have kids then. I don't have I don't yeah. have kids. Um, I I just I saw it and I I loved it. And then when the audition came in, I was like, let's just figure this out for myself. Mm-hmm. And then I need to go back and watch it again, actually, because for a second I kept asking the question of like, oh wait, is this in the movie? Is this in the movie? And people would look at me like I was crazy, like I hadn't done my homework, which I guess I hadn't. And and there are some things in in there's a ton of stuff in the show that was not in the movie, obviously. Mm-hmm. But then like Fixer Upper in Act Two, which is this big, fun fixer, you know, Mm -hmm. dance number. I was in rehearsal and I asked if that was in the movie. And people were like, yeah, of of course. Like, who, of who are you? And (laughs) watch the movie. It made a billion dollars. Like, you should know this movie. (laughs) This is a really important animated movie. Anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. it's my, my four, Let It Go is still my four-year-old's He's like, this is my favorite song, Daddy. He likes that. Yeah, yeah we'll listen to the, the soundtrack. And they like the uh, the ice song at the very beginning of the movie where they're cut, you know cutting through the ice. I guess the mm-hmm. the the prologue. Yeah, um, I get a lot of. Um, it's crazy when you get into a show like this. How many people with kids come out of the woodwork? There's a lot. I'm getting a lot of text messages and emails about. Oh, you know, people I haven't heard from in a while. You know, oh, it's mm-hmm. my kid's favorite movie. I'm like, oh, you're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. I'll archive that. Yeah, yeah exactly. No. Um, so you've worked with uh, a couple very big names, um, Cassie and Patty being two of them, obviously. But you've had Carly Rae Jepsen uh, worked with her in Cinderella, yep. and then you were actually understudying and working with Orlando Bloom in Romeo and Juliet. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Have you? Have you? Have you ever gotten starstruck working with anybody? Hmm. Starstruck. I I don't really get starstruck. I get starstruck by maybe people that some people don't get starstruck by. Like when I met Glenn Hansard backstage at once for the first time, he kind of showed up just no no big deal. He was just seeing the show. And I couldn't remember my own name. You know, I was like, I'm right. just so grateful for you. Because I like, Falling Slowly was one of the first songs I learned how to play on the guitar. Um, but like, Orlando, when you get in a rehearsal room with people, even the big, big stars, you know, and I've done readings or, or benefits or whatever. And big stars, I would say for the vast majority of them who are drawn to the theater are just people who happen to be super famous. Mm-hmm. Um, and Orlando just wanted to be as good as possible. And he worked so hard. And Carly was the same way, and Kiki Palmer was the same way, and you know, and then obviously, you know, I mean, the Broadway, you know, for Corey Cott and Laura Osnes mm-hmm. and Casey Pat, of course, like I mean, they're just they're all they just want to do a good job, and they're they're just people. So I, I do get starstruck. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. Maybe come back to that one. Was there anybody that that you'd like to meet that you haven't gotten the chance to yet? Um, Paul McCartney. Yeah, if good there's one. any chance in the world that he came to see once like before I 
came into it, I think. I could be making that up, but he did not come to see it while I was in it. But Springsteen is another one, and he did come to see it once when I was in it. And he was going to come backstage, and we were all ready. And then there was like a bit of like a security kerfuffle where like people were asking for autographs and kind of made a scene around him. And so then he kind of hopped in his car and drove off, oh. uh, which was a total bummer. Uh, but yeah, people, I, I'm just the biggest Beatles fan. And, you know, so if there was ever a world where I bumped into him, that would be really cool. Um, well, I know Paul McCartney is a huge listener of this, huge fan of this podcast. <laughs> yeah. He writes me every day. Yeah, so yeah, here, yeah. Sir Paul, you right, know, reach, Sir out, pa reach out to Joe here. Please, yeah. God. <laughs> That's so good. Um, you mentioned earlier uh, you've had guest spots and stuff. So you've had on TV, so NCIS, uh, NCIS New Orleans, Chicago Fire, Deception, um, All My Children, Soap Opera, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and The Carrie Diaries. Um does that did that all fit in in between like while you're doing shows or do you do it on time off how does that work yeah i i the tv thing new york is an amazing place there's so much tv being shot here and cast here all the time and um i think a lot of musical theater and broadway people want to you know pursue that as well um you know you see a lot of amazing people who got their start in, in the theater and got their start on broadway who are you know you know, Billy Porter was the biggest thing at the Oscars the other night, you know, like Broadway legend. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's yeah. just like unbelievable. Um, uh, you know, I went to college with Darren Chris. You know, these people are who like started in the theater and they're they're, they're now having huge TV Darren Chris went to UM too? Yeah, he was oh, wow. an acting major. Wow. Yeah. We actually played um, music together in a little breakfast cafe for like hungover students on Saturday and Sunday mornings my freshman year of college. <laughs> this place called Sava's in Ann Arbor, which and uh, is still there. And, and that was how I met him, you know, what seems like a million years ago. Um, but uh, the TV stuff is, there's just a lot of it. And all of the, the majority of the stuff I've done, I just did an episode of The Code, um, which is um, a show that's going to come out on CBS in the next, I think in April, it's premiering. Pippa Sue is on that. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then the NCIS and that sort of stuff all happened on breaks. I was just, I was kind of chilling, hanging around, you know, going on audition, get a job. Um, and that was really a lot in the last year. I think I did like five of them, five or six in the last year alone. Um, and you just kind of, you're just grinding, you know, we're just New York actors trying to string it together. And so I, I actually just did my taxes the, the other day and I <laughs> handed <laughs> this stack of forms to my accountant and I was like, here you go. Here's, here's 12 W2s of, you know, just, right. but you just, just try to figure it out. But the TV stuff has been really fun and, you know, try to do a bit of that you know, in conjunction with or on time off and, and, you know. If you get your, if you had your druthers, would you do theater full time or would you, would you do TV or movies full time? Um, you know, I like the TV stuff because it's different every day. Um, sometimes when you get, you know, six months or eight months or a year into a, into a long run of a Broadway show, it isn't in, in its essence, the same thing every day. And you just, for me, you know, I, you get up there and you, you know, you catch catch the look of, I mean, with Frozen, you catch the look of some little girl in an Elsa costume and immediately you're like, oh, okay, I know I'm doing the show today. Like, it's going to be, mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to be a problem. But the TV stuff is fun because it's, every day is a little a little different. It's a little, you know, where are we today? What are we shooting today? Um, in my perfect world, I'd kind of honestly be where I am doing Frozen and then maybe get to do like a couple days on a movie and and go back to Frozen. Mm -hmm. and so I'm able to do, I haven't, I'm kind of just, I'm here, I'm in Frozen, I'm doing the thing. But, um, you know, I'd like to kind of do it all at the same time, which is extremely greedy. Um, but why not, why not put it to the universe? That I would like it all, please. I'd like it all. <laughs> I'd like it all. Okay, Hans. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly right. There we go. Kind of sounds horrible. But No, I think it, I think it's completely doable. There are so many people that, that they'll, like I followed James Iglehart as a friend of mine. Yeah. Um, it, it seems like he's always leaving Hamilton and coming back and he's like doing these TV shows and I, yeah. you know, all of a sudden well, he's popping up with Jonah Hill and, mm -hmm. and Maniac on Netflix. And I'm yeah. like, well, you know. Yeah. And Patty just shot, Patty just shot a, a Christmas movie like two weeks ago. Like yeah. right as I was going into the show, she was shooting a movie. Um, my friend Ashley Park, who I went to college with, who's in Mean, mean Girls, Girls was, yeah. was doing a, a Netflix show the last couple of, you know, weeks and months and, um, you know, like you're able to kind of do a lot of it. And, and that's mm -hmm. why New York is so exciting because there's just so much, 
so much happening. You can you can do your you know do musicals, do plays, mm-hmm. do TV, do film, do all of it. So well, the nice thing is that you can film during the day. Yeah, yeah, because if you, on a one show day, you just go in at night. That's your day starts at what six thirty, yeah. six o'clock. Yeah, and that's that's the the dream. And Bobby mm-hmm. and I were talking about it in the dressing room the other day because. Some people uh, just started, Brian just started working on a new lab, a uh, new workshop. Like, what are we calling them now? I think we're calling them labs. The, we, yes, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> so our music director started working on a new show. And Bobby and I were like, isn't that the dream? You just want to be like doing new stuff all day, doing your Broadway show at night. You know, that mm-hmm. it, it's so, it can be a really rewarding career when you're, when you're working a lot. When you're not working, it's, it's pretty horrible all the time. You know? <laughs> but, uh, but when you're working, it's pretty sweet. Have you have you had any dark times when you haven't been working? Yeah, I mean, coming off Cinderella, I didn't work for um, almost almost a year. Um, I did Cinderella that closed in 2015, and then I didn't. We did the out of town of Bandstand at Paper Mill in mm-hmm. the fall of that year, and so that was the only time that I worked in 15. And then in 2016, I basically didn't work at all, and so it was like I was catering and waiting tables and bartending and and just grinding and and it was and that was really it, i mean that'll again you'll you're you're on a catering job and somebody's like wait a minute are you i just saw you as the prince in cinderella right and i'm and i'm holding a tray of food and it's like yes you did and i also have to pay my rent and so here we are mm-hmm. um but that was the real that was that was an extremely informative time too because there's no there's no certainly no shame in in bartending or there's no shame in any of that. I feel like there's a shame in credit card debt, you know, like you gotta, you gotta grind, you gotta figure out a way to pay your bills. Mm -hmm. And as an actor, like you can be, you can be super successful and then you can not be super successful and you can be on top of the world. And, you know, my, my wife and I talk about, you know, you save your ducats, you just stash it away. Don't, you know, I kind of want to take expensive vacations and she's like, no, we need to (laughs) save for a rainy day. (laughs) Um, But yeah. So, well, hopefully, hopefully it will, it will keep coming yeah. and you can do other things like, uh, like start a Broadway hockey league. Yeah. Broadway which hockey. Which I know you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I talked about that at one point. I don't think, I think there's like, there'd be like four of us, you know, there'd be like four or five guys skating around in the Broadway hockey league, but I love the Broadway softball league. I play in the Broadway softball mm-hmm. league on Thursdays. And so that's super fun. Um, and I also don't think producers would love a Broadway hockey league. I think, you know, Hans needs all his teeth. I was going to say, you still have all your teeth. <laughs> yeah, See, this yeah. one, half of this one's fake. Half oh, really? of the, the right one had to be like, had to be like a soldered back on. Yeah, Oof. I get all sorts of you know, busted nose and God. stitches. I get these weird scars on my chin from stuff, but nobody can see that because it's a podcast, so. <laughs> well, you we can you can send a selfie when you do the Instagram takeover. Yeah. You can do like the story of yeah, your be like, of all your scars. Here's yeah, this, yeah. Ooh, yeah, tough guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun. No, I would. I I always played uh, uh, roller or hockey on rollerblades. Yeah, roller. Yeah, sure, roller hockey. Roller yeah. hockey, if you want to call it that. Yeah, because in North Carolina we didn't have ice. We had ice when it snowed on the street, but not like an ice rink where we could go play. Right. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty decent with like a stick and rollerblades, but not so good with uh, with the ice skates. <laughs> Right. Um, so anyway, we're wrapping up here. Great. We've been chatting for a great, a great time. Thank you for this. And there's three standard questions that we ask everyone great. to close out the podcast. First one, very simply, what motivates you? Um, that's a good question. That's a very that's a kind of meta question. Um, what motivates me? Um, I need to pay my bills. No. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> okay, Hans. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> like, this is turning into a real Hansian. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I find that that um, I just, I set out on this bizarre path because I wanted, you know, to, to be an actor because I I wanted to tell stories and I wanted to play make-believe um, when I was a kid. And I find I just want to keep playing make-believe as long as people will let me. Um, and also, I steal this from Danny Burstein, who we, I worked with in Moulin Rouge this summer. Um, he said, uh, the only thing I ever wanted was the respect of my peers. And I think that I'd steal that completely. I just want to, I want people to be like, oh, yeah, I, you know, mm-hmm. I loved, worked with Joe, respect Joe, love Joe. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, those two. 
All right. Number two, then, what advice would you give to your younger self and younger people listening now starting out down a similar path? Um, definitely to other, you know, to people who want to, young, young people who want to be actors, um, to consume as much as possible. Um, see everything, read, watch movies, watch TV, you know, go on YouTube binges of your favorite singers. Figure out, like, like consume as much as possible because it's, that's not wasting time that's gaining knowledge in, in the same way that we go to school and, you know, it's just a different type of learning. That was the best advice I got mm -hmm. from a college professor was it's a different type of work, you know? Um, and so I would say just consume as much as possible and be nice to people. Uh, we had a talk back the other day and Ryan Redmond said that to this group of kids. And I totally agree with that. Just try to be good to people. Try to be nice. There's a lot of negativity mm -hmm. and it's a very competitive industry where a lot of people will, um, who, I don't know, I don't want to say stab you in the back, but but there's a lot of um, negativity. And so to try to be a good person, to be nice. Um, and then to my younger self, I would say don't, just don't be scared. I think that I was scared of succeeding sometimes and therefore would um, sort of self-sabotage, you know? Like I would, I would not, I wouldn't learn my lines for the audition. Why? And I, you know, I don't know. You're, you're like, I don't, I, it's like, it's like, why don't you do the math homework? It's, it, it's, you, and so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do the work. And I think that that was a fear of, of, of failure, a fear of, of succeeding even, a fear of what that even, what that means. And so, and I still struggle with this sometimes to just don't be afraid. Um, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the unknown. Don't be afraid of, of, um, yeah, just don't be don't be afraid. My mind is going so many places to try to figure out the motivation behind that. And I totally get it. <laughs> I'm I'm the same way a lot of times is is if you don't try, then you don't have the possibility of failing. Yeah. But there's still that's it's deeper than that. Mm -hmm. Because why are you afraid of failing? Um yeah, I I I can't totally answer that. I guess I I just I've seen in myself whether it's not doing your homework in high school because for you know whatever reason yeah. to going in front of a huge casting office and and leaving and being like I didn't know my lines why didn't I know my lines and and it's just it's just work it's preparation but it's huh. it's a it's a fear of of failing but you're absolutely right if you don't if you don't put yourself out there you can't you know get hurt and so, and I think that that's the hardest part about being an actor is you're just putting yourself out there over and over and over and over again. And so that's, that's a big one for my younger self. Just, just be, be totally ready to fail and don't worry about it. Don't be afraid of, of failure. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, this business is a lot of rejection mm -hmm. and, but rejection does not equal failure. Exactly. Because sometimes you're just not the, like, you don't even look right. Right. That that could be. This is one of the few industries where you get you have to get discriminated against because of your looks. Yeah, yeah, they can so, do that. Yeah. Anyway, okay. <laughs> yeah. Last question. Yeah. If you can only see one show for the rest of your life, but you can see it as many times as you want, which show would you see? Passing Strange. Passing Strange is my favorite musical. Stu, uh, Spike Lee filmed it. It's on. It used to be on Netflix. It's not on Netflix anymore. Um, I saw that. I watched that movie about once or twice a year um it is have you have you seen it Do you, mm -hmm. uh, no, it, it, it's it's a musical that about mothers and sons it's about being an artist it's about being a musician and i saw it i studied abroad in london uh, my junior year of college and it completely changed my whole life and still, like, like I'll, I'll see some of the actors who were in that. I mean, Colin Domingo, Rebecca Naomi Jones, um, and and I'll see them walking around New York or, like, you know, be an event or something. And, like, this Oklahoma that's coming up, like, Rebecca Naomi Jones is in it. And I'm totally starstruck by those actors because it's my favorite show. Hmm. And so I've never I've never met any of them, but I think if I met them, I'd get really weird because I just want to talk about, like, well, what, did, what, did, what, did, what, did, what, did, what did you do at this point? What did you do at that point? Um, and it's just about, it, it's a, show that I, I have a great relationship with my mom, but I find shows about mothers and sons, fathers and sons, just wreck me, family stuff. Um, and also like what it means to be an artist. And that show to me is, is such a comment on what it is to be an artist and, and to be 
in love. That it's mm-hmm. also a love story, and it's a you know how do you how do you keep a relationship going in the arts? And I just got married in October, but it's like how do you you know it's about relationships, it's about family, it's about music and art. And so I would I still I watch it a couple times a, a year. I'm so glad it's filmed. I think that there I I hope that there's more of that in the future for Broadway because um, I think the archival purposes and and is is really great. It's um, getting turned into a film. Yeah. Yep. That's getting turned into a film. Yeah. Um, and so that's my, yeah, that's that one for sure. Um, and it's an easy answer. That one. Yeah. That was quick. Yeah. That's Most a, people. They're like, Oh, I hate you. Why'd you ask me that? Yeah. And then you were just like, all right, yeah, this that's one. it. Easy. That's, that's it. And I have, I mean, I love so many, so many things I've shows and, and theater and, you know, once is another one. I mean, mm-hmm. I was so lucky. I feel, I still talk about it all the time. It was my favorite show. I saw it, I saw it three times and then I got to be in it. And, um, but Passing Strange is truly one of my all-time favorite pieces of art, period. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we can find more of you on Twitter and Instagram, Joe underscore Carol Mitch. Yeah. For Michigan. Michigan, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, and then you can get more of me, theater underscore podcast on Instagram and Twitter or facebook.com slash official theater podcast. Listen and subscribe. Please rate this podcast. If you're listening on a podcast player, go rate it, leave a comment. I love to hear that stuff. You can reach me via feedback at the theater podcast.com. This is produced by Jillian Hawk. And the music you hear right now, beginning and end, our pre roll and post roll is all by Jukebox the Ghost. Joe Carroll, thank you again for coming. This has been so fun. Thank you very much. Take a deep breath, make the world a little colorful.